Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel, Creative Grandma. This video is for the Corner to Corner Dreamtime Baby Blanket. Now this is the first time I've ever done Corner to Corner and I was so excited to try it. And when I started making the afghan, I thought, why haven't I done the corner to corner before this? It's so easy. It's so fun. And I really hope you enjoy this video. This baby blanket is folded in four. So I have it folded because it's too large to get the whole entire afghan in the video. It has a beautiful diagonal pattern. And I used the Premier New Dotty yarn. Now this yarn, I felt worked better in a diagonal pattern than back and forth. It just give it a more visual appeal to the yarn. Now this little afghan measures 38 by 38 inches square. It's done in the corner to corner stitch and then I added a beautiful little V stitch border around the afghan. So let me tell you everything you're going to need to make this afghan today. The yarn I chose was the Premier Dotty yarn, and this yarn is so delicately soft. It's super soft. I was extremely surprised the softness of this yarn. So when you're out there trying to find one of those three lightweight yarns that you can use for maybe baby items or something that's really super soft against your skin, you're going to love this yarn. It's called Premier Dotty. It's a brand new yarn they just released. And it has a color shifting dot print. Now this is a knit sample here. And it really can have a different look depending on what crochet stitch you're using. But again, I thought this looked a little nicer using the corner to corner in that diagonal. Where you can see the diagonal stripes going across. The Dotty yarn comes in a large 656 yard skein, 600 meters, 7 ounces, 200 grams. It is a super soft 100% acrylic yarn. It is classified as a number three lightweight yarn. And the reason I chose this yarn is because it was machine wash warm, tumble dry, low heat. And when you're making those little baby blankets, they spit up, they get dirty. You want to be able to wash them and keep them nice and clean. The other thing about the yarn is it has been tested and approved against 350 harmful substances. So you know it's safe for the most delicate of skin. So you're going to need two skeins of color number 2008-05. Garden Party. This is what the yarn looks like and when you do the corner to corner this is what it's going to look like when you work that yarn up. Now you can also choose one of the other many colors they have available but you're going to need two skeins for the main part of the blanket. You're also going to need one skein of the Premier Basic DK. This again is a number three lightweight yarn. It comes in a 306 yard, 280 meter, 3.5 ounces, 100 gram, 100% acrylic. This yarn again has been tested and approved. It's machine wash warm, tumble dry low. And this is color white. It's color 1142-01 white. So you need just one skein or the color of your choice for the border. They have many colors available and there's many colors in this garden party. You can choose blue, red, yellow, purple, whatever color you want for your border. I just decided to choose white. Now the one thing I do want to point out is I did choose the bright white for the border. And then after I got started with the border, I noticed that it didn't quite match some of these white colors. It almost looked like there was two different shades of white. It looked brighter here and up here, and then it looked more like a creamy white here. So you have to use your own judgment if you want that bright white, or if you want to go with a more creamier white, maybe an off white, or maybe you just want to choose one of the colors in this other garden party, one of these brighter colors for your border. But I just wanted to point that out because I don't want anybody to be disappointed 
in their afghan once you get that border on. I just want to point that out and you can really notice it right here how that is such a different color of white and then here it looks a little brighter. So again use your own judgment on your border color. You're also going to need a crochet hook size H8 or 5 millimeter. So grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get our project started. I already have my yarn attached to the hook and I just used a double knot. You can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn to your hook. We're going to begin our corner to corner blanket with a chain six. You're going to yarn over the hook, pull through the loop, that creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. To begin row one, we're going to double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So we're going to skip the first three chain. Remember the loop on your hook does not count as a chain. You're going to yarn over, skip one, two, three chains, into the fourth chain, work a double crochet. Yarn over, pull back through that chain. You have two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how you make a double crochet. To finish row one, we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next two chains. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work your double crochet. And then to finish the row, double crochet into that last chain. Row one is finished. This creates our first block. So now for row two, you're going to turn your work and we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're just going to repeat and make another block. We're going to yarn over you're going to skip the first three chains into that fourth chain, work your double crochet. Double crochet into the next chain. And then you have one chain remaining. It's right at the top. You'll see it right here. You're going to double crochet into that next chain. So our first block of row two is finished. Now each row you're going to have one additional block. So now we need to make our second block. So in order to make the second block, you're going to look like you have a stair step here. This is the top step and I'm gonna call this the bottom step. You want to take your bottom step and just take it from the bottom and fold it up so the side of that block meets the last stitch. You're going to have the chain three space on top. You're going to insert underneath the chain three space and you're going to slip stitch. Yarn over, pull back through that chain three space and pull through the loop on your hook. We're going to make our second block in the chain three space. You're going to begin and you're going to chain three. Now we're going to make three more double crochet underneath and around this chain three space. Yarn over, insert underneath the chain three space, work your double crochet. Yarn over, pull back through and underneath that chain three space. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. We need to make two more double crochet back into that same chain three space. One, and two. So when you look at your work, you'll notice row one right here, you had one block. When you worked row two, now you have two blocks. When we work row three, we'll have three blocks. And when we work row four, we'll have four, and it continues on in that manner. Now we're ready to begin row three. For row three, you're going to turn your work. You're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
Now we're going to yarn over. You're going to skip the first three chain into that fourth chain. Work your double crochet. You're going to double crochet into the next chain. Then you have one chain remaining, double crochet into that last chain. So your first block of row three is finished. So now to join your first block to the second block, you just want to turn your work and you're going to bring the bottom block of the previous row up so the top of those stitches meet the side of the last double crochet made. You're going to insert into this chain three space and slip stitch your first block to the second block. Now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and this beginning chain three counts as the first double crochet of your second block. You're going to work three double crochet underneath and around that same chain three space. Yarn over, insert underneath the chain three space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So now your block is finished so you want to join it to the block below. So you just want to fold that bottom block so the top of that block is touching the side of the last double crochet made. You're going to insert underneath the top of that beginning chain three, slip stitch underneath and through that space and through the loop on your hook. Now we're going to chain three and make our last block. So the beginning chain three counts as the first double crochet of the next block and then you're going to work three double crochet underneath that chain three space. One, two, and three. So again, when you look at your work, you can see how your side is straight, your bottom is straight, and then you're going corner to corner. So we have row three is finished, and you're going to have a total of three blocks. So now we're going to go ahead and start row four. So again, you're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You're going to yarn over, skip the first three chains, and double crochet into that fourth chain from hook. Then you have two chains remaining. Double crochet into the next chain, double crochet into the next chain, and your first block of the new row is complete. So now you want to join your new block to the block of the previous row. So just fold that block up, just bring the top of that bottom block up and to the side of the last double crochet made. So the top of the stitches of the block below are against the side of the last double crochet made. You're going to insert your hook into that top chain three space, slip stitch, yarn over, pull underneath and through the chain three space and through the loop on your hook. Now you're ready to do your next block. Oh no, I have a knot in my yarn. Now because this is just a sample of the beginning, I already have the blanket half made. I'm not going to fix that. I'm just going to work my pattern. You're going to chain three, and that beginning chain three counts as the first double crochet. Now you're going to work three double crochet underneath that same chain three space. Yarn over, Insert underneath and around that chain three space, work three double crochet. One, two, 
two and three. So your second block of row four is finished. So when you look at your work, you want to attach your block that you just made to the block below. So again, you're just going to take your work and fold that block below right up against the side of that last double crochet made. So again, it's the top of the stitches touching the side of the last double crochet made, and the chain three space will be here on top of that block. Insert underneath the chain three space, yarn over, pull through the chain three space, and pull through the loop on your hook, and that slip stitch your two blocks together. So now we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to work three double crochet underneath and around this chain three space. Yarn over, insert underneath that top chain three space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So as you get larger and larger, it seems to want to automatically fold up to meet that last block. So we're over and we have one block to go. So again, you want to take the bottom block of the previous row and you want that block to come up and meet the side of the last double crochet work. So just go ahead and pull it up to the side of the current block you just made insert under the top chain three space of that block below and slip stitch the two blocks together. You're going to chain three and now you're going to work three double crochet back into that same chain three space. One two and three. And row four is finished. So again, when you look at your work, you're going from corner to corner. So we just finished row four, so we're going to have a total of four blocks. So now to continue working on your baby afghan, you're just going to continue and work row four, doing one increase at each row, so each row you'll have one additional block to work. So repeat row four until you have a total of 49 complete rows. So we already did four rows, so you need to do row four 45 more times. Again, you're using the same procedure where you're increasing that first block and work all your remaining blocks the same. So if you need additional help, just click back on the video, repeat row four, and again, every time you repeat row four, you're going to have one additional block in your row. Repeat row four until you have a total of 49 complete rows. And in order to count your rows, you can just count your blocks up on the diagonal, and you should have 49 blocks at the end of row 49. So go ahead and continue, and I'll meet you at the end of row row 49. I'm over at the end of row 49. This is what your work should look like. Again, this is only a portion of the work. So I'm going to zoom out and show you as much as I can of the baby blanket. Now, when you measure the baby blanket, when you turn your work so the side is straight and the bottom is straight across, you're going to have your diagonal. If you measure the straight edge from the end of row 49 clear down to the beginning of row 1, it's going to measure 36 inches. So when you get down to the corner point where it's straight up the edge and straight across the bottom, it's going to be 36 inches across the bottom and it's going to be 36 inches up to the top point. And then you're going to have your diagonal.
So we're going back up to the end of row 49 because we want to stop at 36 inches or at the end of row 49. So now what we want to do is we want to start decreasing one block each row until we get down to one block, which is going to form our 36 inch square for our baby blanket. So what we're going to do when you decrease is you're going to skip this first block and we're going to slip stitch in each stitch across and start our first block into this chain three space. So let me go ahead and show you how to start decreasing on your baby blanket. So we're going to begin and you just want to turn your work. You're going to insert into the very first stitch and slip stitch. Insert into the next stitch and slip stitch through that stitch and through the loop on your hook and then slip stitch into the next stitch and we're just working our way over to the chain three space. So now you're going to see the chain three space. So insert underneath the chain three space and work a slip stitch. So by slip stitching across this first block, we're decreasing. So let's go ahead and start working down the diagonal of our blanket. You're going to begin with the chain three, one, two, three, and you're beginning chain three counts as the first double crochet. Then we're working in the same method, working three double crochet underneath and around that chain three space. One, two, and three. Now we need to connect our block to the block below. So you're just going to take your top block that you just made and take your hook and insert into the chain three space of the block below. So insert into that chain three space and slip stitch. This just connects your blocks. And that is what it's going to look like. Then you're going to start all over again and chain three, one, two, three. You're going to work three double crochet underneath and around that chain three space of that next block. One, two, and three. Then you're just going to take your hook, drop it down to the next block, look for the chain three space on the end, insert right underneath that chain three space of that block below, and slip stitch through that space and through the loop on your hook. And you can see how we're starting to work down the diagonal. And then you're just going to repeat chain three, one, two, and three, Work three double crochet underneath and around that chain three space. One, two, and three. Again, just take your hook down to the block below. Look for the chain three space right on the end of that block insert underneath that chain three space and slip stitch through that chain three space and through the loop on your hook to join your blocks. You're going to chain three, then work three double crochet underneath and around the chain three space of that same block. One, two, and three. Then you're going to take your hook down to the block below, insert into the end chain three space, go right underneath the chain three space, yarn over, pull through the chain three space, and pull through the loop on your hook. You just slip stitched your blocks together. So go ahead and continue working in that manner down to the end of the row, and I'll meet you at the end of row 50. 
I'm over at the end of row 50. We just worked on the diagonal and we're decreasing one block per row. I'm over at the end of row 50. I'm over to our last block. So now what we're doing as we decrease is we're going to start putting our straight edge across the top of our afghan. So what you're going to do is we do not want to increase any more blocks. So what you're going to do is insert your hook right into the chain three space of the last block standing of the row. Insert into that space, yarn over, pull through that space, and pull through the loop on your hook. So what we're doing as we're decreasing is we're going to be starting our straight edge across the top of our afghan. So you're going to notice that you have two blocks. It's starting the straight edge. So now we want to get over here and start our next block. So what you're going to do for row 51 is you're just going to turn your work. Once you slip stitch into the top of that last block, go ahead and turn your work. Now we're going to slip stitch across these three double crochet and into the chain three space of this block. Now the yarn is on the front side of your work so all you have to do is just take that yarn, pull it to the front of your work. You're going to insert into that very first double crochet stitch and then just pull on that so it tightens it up a little bit and then slip stitch through that stitch and through the loop on your hook and then your yarn is back on the back side of your work. You're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, slip stitch into the next double crochet, and then you're over at your chain three space so insert right underneath the chain three space and slip stitch. So now when you look at your work again the side will be straight and you can see how the top of our afghan is starting to get the straight edge. So now we're ready to start working our blocks down the diagonal. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, you're going to work three double crochet back into that chain three space. One, two, and three. You want to join your block to the next block by just bringing your hook down, inserting it into that chain three space and then slip stitch through that chain three space and through the loop on your hook. Now I did forget to mention that at the end of row 50, you're going to have a total of 48 blocks. So as you increase with corner to corner and you start and you start working those increase rows, you're going to have the same amount of blocks as the row number. So row one will have one block, row 10 will have 10. And as long as you're increasing, you're going to have the same amount of blocks as rows. But when you start decreasing, then you're going to start decreasing your blocks by one block per row once you start decreasing. So again, row 50, you're going to have 48 blocks. Now we're on row 51, so you're going to have 47 blocks at the end of row 51. And you can see how we're starting to decrease, so you can see how this block we just made adds the third block to the straight edge at the top. So now we're just going to continue working that pattern by chaining three, work three double crochet back into that chain three space, one, two, and three. Then bring your hook down to the next block below, right to the end where the chain three space is. Insert under the chain three space and slip stitch through that chain three space and through the loop on your hook to join your two blocks together. Then you're going to start again. You're going to chain three, one, two, three. Work three double crochet underneath and around that ending chain three space. One, 
two and three then again bring your hook down you're going to go right into the end of the chain three space of the block below and slip stitch and then you're going to start again you're going to chain three work three double crochet back into that same chain three space one two and three bring your hook down to the block below insert right into that chain three space slip stitch through the chain three space and through the loop on your hook you joined your two blocks together now I am holding my work where my squares are going down now it depends on how you're holding your work you may be working up or down so go ahead and continue working in that manner down to the last block and I'll meet you at the end of row 51. I'm over at the end of row 51. We just worked across the diagonal and when you get to the end of the row you're going to have one block remaining. You see two blocks because you're seeing the straight edge but as you're working across the diagonal you work down until you see the very last block standing up. So now we're just going to join our last block to the last block of the previous row. Insert under the chain three space and slip stitch through the chain three space and through the loop on your hook and it joins your blocks together. So now you're in the middle of the straight edge so we need to come over to this chain three space in order to start working down the length. Now at the end of row 51 when you start counting your blocks across the diagonal you're going to have a total of 47 blocks. So now to continue working on your project, you're just going to repeat row 51 until you get down to only one block. So let me get you started on row 52. Again, you're just repeating row 51 over and over until you get down to just one block remaining. So now to begin row 52, you're just going to turn your work. Again, your yarn is going to be on the front side. So I just take my yarn up over my hook so it's in front of my work. I just keep it loose and then I insert my hook into that very first double crochet stitch and then tighten up that yarn and then slip stitch through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. And it just brings your yarn to the back of your work insert into the next stitch and slip stitch insert into the next stitch and slip stitch and then you're going to be over at your chain three space so insert into your chain three space and slip stitch so again when you look at your work it's going to be straight up the side and then it should be straight across. If it's not straight across, then you did something wrong. So just click back on the video, try to figure out what you did wrong here until you get to your straight edge. Go ahead and start chaining three. One, two, three. Then you're going to work three double crochet back into that same chain three space one two and three then you're going to bring your hook down you're going to insert it into the chain three space of the block below right into that end chain three space slip stitch through the chain three space and through the loop on your hook and you joined your blocks together and when you look at your work you can see that you added your next block across your straight edge and then you start working down the diagonal chain three then work three double crochet back into that same chain three space. One, two, and three. 
Then again, you're going to take your hook down to the block below, insert right into that chain three space, and slip stitch through the chain three space and through the loop on your hook. Your blocks are joined together. Then again, you're going to chain three, work your three double crochet into that chain three space. One, two, and three, and then join in the chain three space of the block below, insert into the chain three space, and slip stitch through that chain three space and through the loop on your hook. So go ahead and repeat row 51 until you have a total of only one block remaining. Again, you're going to decrease by one block with each row you do until you get down to a total of one block. So go ahead and repeat row 51 until you have only one block remaining and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my last row. I had one block remaining as we work on the diagonal. And you can see that all four sides of your little baby afghan is straight now. And all we have to do is join that last block to the block below. Insert into that chain three space in the block below and slip stitch your two blocks together. So I am done with the garden party or the multi-color. I'm just going to fasten off. And again, I like to use a little bit longer length. So I chain two to fasten off, lift my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So I'll be weaving this in on the back, in and out through my stitches when I get the afghan completely done. So let me zoom out. Now I'm not going to be able to get the entire afghan in the viewfinder. Now this yarn is super soft. It's baby soft. It's one of those yarns that when you're searching for the perfect yarn for something either to wear or against a baby or a child's skin, this is really nice. This is nice and soft. So this is what it looks like. You can see our diagonal stripes. Let me move it this way. So you can see how our stripes are going on the diagonal. Just makes a beautiful rainbow effect with all those colors. So this is our main portion of the baby afghan. Let me try to get the whole thing in the viewfinder. So that's all the way out. So that's as much as I can get in the viewfinder. So now we're getting ready to start our border around our corner to corner afghan. Now I decided to use a beautiful pure white, crisp and clean. I just think that when you use a solid color with a multi-color, the, the entire afghan is multi-color, and when you use a solid color for the border, it almost acts as a picture frame where it helps make your eye go to the center of the blanket where all the beautiful colors are. Now I'm using white, but you can choose any color that's in this rainbow effect of this garden party. So grab your yarn, grab your hook we're using the same size hook and let's get our border started so now we're ready to begin round one of our border this is the last row worked as we decreased this is where we fastened off and I have my white already attached to my hook and I just used a double knot you can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn we're going to go back up to our corner and we're going to go right into the top of this beginning chain three. Now don't go into the actual chain three space. Go into the top chain. Insert into that top chain. You're going to yarn over, pull through that chain, and pull through the loop on your hook. We're just joining our yarn to our work. We're going to begin and we're going to chain one. Now this beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. You're going to insert right back into that same corner chain, work a single crochet. You're going to chain two, insert right back into that same chain, work a single crochet. So we're working a single crochet V-stitch or some people call it a shell stitch. 
now we're going to be working in between each block across to our next corner. You're going to skip the remaining stitches of this current block and you're going right into the space between the blocks. Insert into that space, work a single crochet, chain two, insert back into that same space, work a single crochet. Let's do it again. You're going to skip the next block and you're going right in between the skip block and the next block, right between those two blocks. You'll see that space. Insert into that space, work a single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet back into that same space. So now we're just going to continue and work our single crochet, chain two, single crochet between each set of blocks across. Insert between the next two blocks, work a single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. So let's do it again. You're going to insert your hook between the next two sets of blocks, insert into that space, work a single crochet, chain two, insert back into that same space, work a single crochet. And that's all there is to working across the side of your afghan. So go ahead and continue. You're going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet between each set of blocks across to the very last block on this side of your afghan. And I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at the first corner of round one of our border. This is what your work should look like. We worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet between each group of blocks across to the last block. So when you get over to your last block to do your corner, we want to go right into the top of this ending stitch. Do not work into the chain three space. You want to make sure you go up to the very top of the stitch. Insert into the top of that very last stitch, single crochet, chain two, and then back into the very top of that stitch or chain, work a single crochet. And this forms our corner. So now you just want to start the pattern again where we're working a single crochet, chain two, single crochet between each group of blocks down to your next corner. And then you're going to work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet right into the top of the stitch at the corner. And you're going to repeat that around three sides. So let me go ahead and get you started. So let me go ahead and get you started. Again, we're working our stitches right between each group of blocks. So in between the first and second block, right into that space where the two blocks meet, work a single crochet, chain two, insert back into that space, work a single crochet. Now we're going to go in between the next two sets of blocks, so we just if you're not sure, just pull your work apart. Here's one block and then here's the other block where they meet. Insert into that space, work a single crochet, chain two and single crochet back into that same space. So again, you're going to insert between the next two sets of blocks right into that space where they meet, work a single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet back into that same space. And that's how you're going to work around your afghan. So go ahead and continue and work a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in between each set of blocks across to your corner. And when you get to the corner, you're going to work into the top of the very last stitch. Never work into the chain three space. Always go into the top stitch and then work your corner of a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. If you need help, just start at the beginning of round one, work across and to your corner, and then you just repeat around the remaining three sides. I'll meet you at the end of round one. 
I'm over at the end of round one. We worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet between each set of blocks around. And then you worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet right at the tip of each corner. So now we're back over to the beginning of round one. So we're just going to join with a slip stitch right in the top of that beginning single crochet. Insert your hook yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So this is what your border looks like, and now we're ready to begin round two. To begin round two, we're going to skip our beginning joining stitch, that single crochet, and we're going to slip stitch into that next chain two space. Insert into the chain two, yarn over, pull through the chain two space, and the loop on your hook. So now we're ready to begin and we're starting our repeat in the corner. So when I say repeat around the remaining three sides, you can just click back on the video to this point where I say this is the start of the repeat, work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and then you do that around the remaining three sides. So let's go ahead and start in our corner chain two space. You're going to work a half double crochet into that corner chain two space, yarn over, insert into the chain two space, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you make a half double crochet. You're going to chain two. And we're going to do that two more times into the corner. Half double crochet back into the corner chain two space. Chain two. Half double crochet back into the corner chain two space. And chain two. And then we're going to work one more half double crochet back into that corner chain two space. So we're starting with a half double crochet and we're ending with a half double crochet. So we have a half double crochet, chain two, and we did that three times. One, two, three, and then you added a fourth half double crochet into that same space. So that is what your corner should look like. Now we're going to work a half double crochet V-stitch into the chain two space of each V-stitch across to your next corner. Yarn over, insert into the next chain two space of the next V-stitch, work a half double crochet. You're going to chain two. Half double crochet back into that same chain two space. So let's do it again. You're going to yarn over, Find your next single crochet V-stitch, insert under the chain two space in the center of that stitch, work a half double crochet, chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. Again, you're going to half double crochet into the next chain two space of the next V-stitch, chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. So go ahead and continue and work a half double crochet, chain two and a half double crochet in each chain two space of each V stitch across to your next corner chain two space and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner so you can see that when you get to the end of the row, your corner is right on the tip of your work and this is the end of the repeat. So now to work the remaining three sides, just click back on the video where you start in the corner and work over until you get to your next corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and get you started on your second side. Again, you're starting your repeat in your corner V-stitch. You're going to half double crochet into the corner chain two space, and you're going to chain two. And we're going to do this a total of three times. So that's one, half double crochet back into the corner chain two space, chain two, that's two of three, half double crochet back into that same space, chain two, and that is three of three. So now we're going to half double crochet back into that same space one more time. 
So when you look at your corner, you're going to have a total of four half double crochets and three chain two spaces. So your corner is made and working the corner starts the repeat. Then we're going to work a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet in each chain two space across to your next corner chain two space. Yarn over, insert into the chain two space of the next V-stitch, work a half double crochet, chain two, and half double crochet back into that same chain two space. So let's do it again. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain two space of the next V-stitch, work a half double crochet, chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same space. So go ahead and continue and work a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet in each chain two space of each V-stitch across to your next corner. And that is the end of the repeat. So again, if you need help, click back on the video to the beginning of round two, follow it from where you start in the corner and then work across to the next corner. I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two of our border. This is what your work looks like. You worked a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet into the chain two space of each V stitch between the corners. And then in the corners, you worked a half double crochet, chain two, three times, and then you added a fourth half double crochet. Now we're ready to join our round together. We're just going up to the top of that beginning half double crochet, insert under the top two loops, and then slip stitch through that stitch and through the loop on your hook. So round two is finished and now we're ready to start our third and final round of our border. For round three of our border, we're going to do a simple half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet border, just like we were doing here, only we're not working any corners. We're just going to work it in each chain two space around. So to begin, you're just going to yarn over, we're skipping this first stitch, and we're only working into the chain two spaces. Half double crochet into that very first chain two space, chain two and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. Half double crochet into the next chain two space, chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. Let's do it again. Half double crochet into the next chain two space, chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. And we're just going to repeat this around our afghan. Yarn over, insert into the next chain two space, work a half double crochet, chain two, and then back in that same chain two space, work a half double crochet. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over, insert into the next chain two space, work a half double crochet. Chain two, and then half double crochet back into that same chain two space. So go ahead and continue. You're going to work a half double crochet, chain two, and a half double crochet in each chain two space around, and I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. We just worked a half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet in each chain two space around. And when you get back to the beginning of the round, we're just going to join our round with a slip stitch into that first half double crochet. So insert underneath the top two loops of that first half double crochet, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. So I'm done with my white, so I'm just going to fasten off. Now when I fasten off, I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, and pull down. 
So now I'm just going to go ahead and weave all my ends in on the wrong side. Just match the colors and weave them in, in and out through the colors. You can see this is a bright white. This one's the off white. So I'm going to take this one down through that darker cream color. So weave in your ends and I'll be back and I'll show you the finished afghan. Our corner to corner dream time baby afghan is finished. Now this is folded in fours because it's too large to get the entire afghan in my viewfinder. But this is the easy corner to corner dream time baby afghan. This is the first time I ever done corner to corner. And I was asking myself, why didn't I try it before? It was so much fun. And if you've never tried the corner to corner stitch before, I hope this video has inspired you to pick up a crochet hook and try it today. So thank you everybody for stopping by and crocheting with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.